Yes, welcome my friends. Hazy Vagrant here. Coming to you with some Vagrovision. Which is basically, you know, a webcam zip tied to an LED light that straps to your head. So if you have any ideas on how I can improve that idea, or if it's just a bad idea and I should not do it, you just let me know. With like really well-mannered internet comments. That's what I really appreciate. Uh, we're waiting for this guy to come back down. I accidentally sent him up into the atmosphere, so. What we got here? We got a Pie Boy 2000, baby. It's a Raspberry Pi inside of just an aesthetic case right here. And it's got a touch screen hooked up to it, but right now it's just running off console. Because I'll get into that, uh, why I'm doing that later. But, as we can see here, G1 X150. You can see this guy very slowly moving over. Because I didn't actually adjust <laughs> the speed that it should be moving. But it is moving to X150. That's a good thing. I can get this guy dialed in later. But the point is, we got Prawn Soul working here. Getting everything set up was uh, was pretty tough. But the internet provides answers. You just got to get some Google Foo going. And you should be able to tinker your way to the top. Yeah. Yeah, you're still moving, aren't you? Let's take a look at the printer bot here. It looks pretty nice. It actually looks pretty Fallout. Maybe I'm biased, but... You know. <laughs> at least from this side. You know, it's very classy from the other side. I think this is the marketing angle. Baby! Looking good! Alright. So. We got this going on. We already got G-Code loaded. That's one little downside we got working with this system. It takes a while to load G-code using a Raspberry Pi. Maybe it's a, like a memory or processor thing, but uh, let's see. Uh, G1, Z, ah, Z10. Yeah, so cool. And extrude. 20. Let's get some plastic working through there, man. Oh. Alright, there you go. That's one problem is I end up having to print at a higher temperature with these uh, aluminum extruders. You know, it causes a little bit of ooze. You can mitigate it using print settings, but uh, up oh, there it goes. See, that's what I'm talking about. A little bit of a pain in the ass. So I'm just going to start this guy since I got the file all loaded up. Uh, file's actually loaded. I'm not using SD cards or anything. I'm actually just on uh, Samba, so it's a pretty good way. I mean, setting up a network is pretty good. And it gets you going if you ever need like a media or file server. So, in the prawn soul, we type in ETA. Oh good, five hours. <laughs> oh yeah, I love watching this thing move, man. We get started here. Alright, now... Just in the beginning, it's always good to, uh, you know, make sure that you don't have any tools around here that you might actually use for this thing, but, uh, you gotta clear some of this oozed plastic out. That's always good. You just get it on out of the way. That's gonna maybe interact somewhere weird, maybe add a little more plastic, and then it puts a little more plastic on top of that, and soon you got, like, a big bank of plastic, and then the print pulls off the board and bails out of there. And now you're making modern art. Modern art's cool, but usually you want to be printing up trinkets and... I mean, I'm sorry, you want to print up really functional things. Because, uh, you know, education is always good. So, setup for this guy was pretty good. You know, it took me about four hours. Uh, nice and easy to actually physically set up the base and all this kind of stuff. Was a little bit bummed because my printer board was a little bit screwed up. Uh, some kind of issue with how it booted up and it was on for like a couple seconds and it must have blown out, but PrinterBot is amazing with their customer service. They ended up shipping one out, only took about a week. It was a pretty torturous week because I wanted to use this thing, but they got their stuff handled over there. They know what they're doing. So they got me a new board. I didn't really have to screw around with the firmware. I'm guessing they got it all set up for me. And now we're away and we're printing with this guy. So there you go, once again, we got the Raspberry Pi 
This guy is pretty cool. Oh, shit. Sorry, I'm still getting used to <laughs> the webcam strapped to the forehead. It's not a normal thing. You know, I'm not born knowing how to do that. There you go. So now I can actually run prints from the Pip-Boy. Yay! Anyways, you guys have yourself a good day. And hopefully I can get some time-lapse photos moving. I didn't do a very good job before of uh, actually getting shots of the printer itself and how it's printing. So here we go. Here's the printer itself. Oh, look, you can actually see it's easier when it's not just, you know, at the very top of the screen. Pretty cool. Alright, so let's check out what's going on with this print. You'll notice with a thick first layer, there's actually a lot of excess plastic, so I really gotta play around in order to get it good. I got a lot of smooshing going on with my first few layers because of that 300% width business. But, that's how I get good pull without a heat of bed, so... I need that good grab. Alright, so there you go. Printer bots are working. And I don't know, man. This is a sturdy frame. You know. I'm thinking maybe if it was a Bowden extruder, you might be able to hook up a second extruder onto this guy. You know, I don't know about two motors onto the cantilevered arm. That would probably cause a lot of vibration, unnecessary force, but. Yeah, so cool. And look, look what I figured out. I can actually do this while I'm watching it with the Vagro Vision. I hope that's not deafening. That <laughs> would be really inappropriate. It's not something, I'm not printing up anything like functional or cool, this is still an aesthetic thing. I know it looks like some kind of gear for a device or something, but like, it just looks like that. This is still a prop. <laughs> sticking out over there, but I don't want to see if my fingers in there. Oh, go away. Oh, it's worth mentioning, too, I got this gold PLA from uh, Matter Hackers. They got some good, uh, 
Damn good prints over there. Damn good plastics. Filaments. Hopefully it corrects, man, but having that thick first layer, that's one of the downsides. I could probably bring it down to like uh, 275 or 250, still get the same amount of pull though. with some uh, layer height calibrating. You hear that? <laughs> That's the sound of me not having properly calibrated. Oh god. Alright, that's enough. My neck hurts. So, take it easy.